14 here. Um, the typical migration pattern uh, that we've seen and have worked with various customers on um, has been, you know, we have a large number of COBOL assets. Um, what we are really targeting here um, is, you know, not identified pieces um, within your COBOL application to eventually um, leverage the Java um, language and frameworks and, and runtime. Um, typically, these COBOL assets have been developed for, for you know, quite a long while um, and are fairly substantial. Um, so we want to select pieces of it um, that, that make sense. Um, in certain cases, you know, a lot of time being spent in, in the application is generally some, a good metric um, to, to select for Java. Um, perhaps you know, it could be something even higher level business rules and leveraging kind of Java-based business rule engines and, and re rewriting, redeveloping your application, porting your application on top of those type of frameworks. Um, but the general trajectory is that you have a COBOL application, you identify pieces within the COBOL application where it makes sense um, to, to really leverage Java or Java-based frameworks. Um, and you live in this world where you have you know, a hybrid solution where you know Java is somehow interoperating with existing COBOL um, transactions and services or parts of the application that are still remaining in COBOL. Um, and you kind of slowly build on top of that, um, hopefully into, into a world where uh, eventually a lot of you know you, the, the existing COBOL logic that you're looking to migrate will be fully written to Java or kind of other more modern um, languages. So I'll move on to the next slide. So this, this slide here is, is, is um, really some performance numbers that we had collected to showcase the interoperability overhead across JNI. The base measurement here is really a COBOL function calling another COBOL function. And what we've done is we've replaced this calling method that's being invoked with a Java implementation. Um, so the first bar on, on this graph um, showcases a simple function that, that just returns. Um, so in COBOL, we're invoking this callee function. It returns and comes back. Now we went and replaced that function with a Java-based implementation that, again, simply returns. Um, and what we've seen here is that the overhead of invoking into Java is, is six times more expensive than a, a kind of a more native COBOL to COBOL invocation. Um, this is the JNI overhead that you're incurring. Um, so there is a cost in terms of you know crossing the language barrier. Um, and it's kind of one of the things that we, we want to highlight. Uh, you know, you, you don't necessarily want to cross this language barrier too often, and you have to be smart about where you want to convert. Uh, however, the more interesting point is, um, and this is what the, the bars, um, the other bars that we're showing in this graph, um, as we add more and more um, into this call E function, um, added, adding more parameters, and even adding more logic, computational logic, and um, we actually see um, the, the gap between COBOL to COBOL versus COBOL Java reducing. Um, so one x is this kind of the baseline, and we see here, for example, with Fibonacci, with count characters, um, these are very simple, um, you know, computation. Um, and we see here that the Java call invoking COBOL, oh, sorry, COBOL invoking the Java implementation actually outperforms the COBOL to COBOL um, version. Um, Java has the benefit of dynamic profiling within within your uh, your Java runtime. We can examine which paths are being um, executed. And it also has the dynamic features of understanding what hardware you're currently running on and optimizing the code for that. Um, so we see here that you know with with something relatively simple like Fibonacci sequence, Java is actually outperforming um, the equivalent COBOL version. And this is this application is measured you know from the COBOL perspective, invoking these routines that are written Java or COBOL. Um, so you know the, the 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 you know I think the main point on this is really try to do as much work in Java as possible. If you're doing something lightweight in Java and returning to COBOL, the, the JNI overhead might bite you. However, if you have something a little more substantial and doesn't but enough computation within Java, um, there's a good chance that you'll see a win with Java. So, okay, moving on to slide, slide 16. Um, this here is talking about one of the technologies that we've developed in Java really to address um, one, one, of the, one of the gaps that we have in terms of Java accessing data within COBOL copybooks. Um, and, and this really here is to address the packed decimal data type, which is a binary coded decimal data type that is 
pretty much a, a native primary data type within COBOL. Um, it's very pervasive. Um, the common best practices prior to Data Access Accelerator has been to represent that um, in a byte array or big decimal objects within Java. Java itself doesn't have a native packed decimal data type. Um, creating big decimal objects within Java uh, is, is um, an overhead. You, you have to create these new Java objects. Um, and the other aspect about big decimal is that they're immutable, such that um, you know anytime you change the value of the big decimal or packed decimal value within Java, you have to create a new big decimal object. So this extra overhead um, um, within Java that's, that's on top of, of kind of what, what COBOL um, can accelerate. Um, however, with Data Access Accelerator, we're providing a set of APIs. These are packaged with the Java SDK um, since Java 7.1. So it's also available in Java 8. Um, these APIs essentially allows you to work on packed decimal data that are represented in byte arrays. Um, there's a Java-based implementation for these packed um, decimal APIs um, that avoid creating big decimal objects, so they're optimized Java implementations. And better yet, if you happen to be running these APIs on CC systems, the JVM would detect that and where possible would actually map, essentially recognize these APIs and map them to the corresponding hardware instructions. So for example, adding two packed decimal numbers um, together in COBOL would map down to an add packed instruction on Z hardware. If you're leveraging this in Java using the Data Access Accelerator, you can invoke the same or similar add packed API, adding two packed decimal data in byte arrays. Um, the JVM will recognize that API for and leverage the same add packed instruction. So you're almost getting the same performance that you would get with COBOL now in Java. So on to 517. Um, here, um, the, the JSOS APIs um, that are also packaged with SDK already under the covers leverages the Data Access Accelerator package by default. Um, so one of the things that um, we've, we've tested with is the Medicare sample application that comes with JSOS. Um, so this is um, reading uh, um, 5 million medical records from a COBOL copy book and, and operating on it. Um, so what we see here is that uh, the Data Access Accelerator APIs under the covers is exploiting the hardware instructions available on the platform. And we're avoiding creating big decimal objects, and we see a transparent 83% improvement purely from Data Access Accelerator. Um, so there's a significant improvement. Um, if you're already leveraging the JSOS APIs, there's nothing you need to change from your application perspective. Um, data, data Access Accelerator is already enabled by default. Um, if you happen to be developing kind of new Java um, uh, applications that are accessing packed decimal data, uh, take a look at the Data Access APIs. Um, they're available, they're supported um, as part of you know, Java 7.1 and later. <laughs>